minus 10 seconds and counting. Feels like we've been gone for a million years. We missed you guys. I know. Fridays are so not the same without you guys. The chat's already bustling oh, over on YouTube. Is it ever? So nice to see everybody hanging out over there. We've got TikTok over here. We've got Instagram over there. How's everybody doing? It's Friday. Happy it's Steve. Steve. Steve's in the chat on you. Steve's in the chat. We Steve got Russell in while. the chat. We got Barbecue Mama. We got Land Shark. Oh, Land Shark is back over on Insta. We have Northern Barbecue Creations. We have S. Will. Guys, it's already going to be a good day. I can tell. Oh, my God. Everyone's showing up here. We missed you guys. We've got Jada and Respect Loyalty and Alex over on um, TikTok. So nice to see you guys. Happy Friday. How's everybody doing? It's been a little bit since we've seen you guys. We have a lot to hang out and catch up on. Yep. And we're excited because we're coming at you guys with another Noble Premium Bison recipe. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see this one in action. It's gonna be a good week. This one's gonna be fantastic, but before we tell you any more about the recipe, we cannot forget to acknowledge that Bat 13 is back on the top. It didn't take the guy long, guys. We knew he'd be back. <laughs> yeah, no, that was like one week out, and then he was like, no, it's uh, mine again. Barbecue put, Pops put Bat 13 back on top. <laughs> We've got Brian, we've got Uncle Steve, our friend Natalie. Hi, Natalie. How are Hi, you? Natalie. Natalie's watching all the way from Greece. And guys, we are like, we probably sound like a broken record because we love when we hear where you are watching from. I know TikTok, a lot of Canadians hang out on TikTok over there for us. So I want to know where are people watching from? Yeah, we let got us Teresa know. in the house. She's saying, Happy Thanksgiving weekend, ladies. We got Frank saying, Hey, you're not underground because I think he's, <laughs> he's referring to the new set, which is right underneath here. Yeah. Okay. So someone on um, TikTok is trying to go live with us. I'm going to go ahead. And, I'm going to go ahead and hit that decline. We've got someone from Montreal. So, guys, we, the reason why we can't go live with you on TikTok. And if you're wondering what we're looking at over here is we have a whole bunch of different camera angles that TikTok doesn't let us show on this platform. So or we, Insta. Or Insta. So we've got our grill back here and the, we're facing forward. If you want to see the different camera angles we have, you'll have to go to our YouTube channel. Which the link is in the bio on TikTok. Click it and you will be launched right into the live show over on YouTube. Same with if anyone wants to watch over on Instagram, if you want to watch all the setup that we have. Um, you guys can click the link in bio because it's over there. Now, a lot of people may be new to the to the show, but yep. we also have our barbecue mama and barbecue pops in the house. They're not just watching though, okay? They watch the show, but barbecue pops is actually the one manning the ship, okay? So he's in charge of all the different camera angles. And barbecue mama, she's right there looking like a little beauty queen right there with her cute little hair. <laughs> oh, and a little bit of a sassy look there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that was in the cutest look right there. That looked like a little bit of irritation. Then we wonder where Key gets it from. Okay, Barbecue Mama's like, get this camera off of me. But that's Barbecue Mama. She's manning the chat, okay? So yeah. behave, everybody. She ain't afraid to, to knock some people out. Yeah, she's a moderator. So, okay, before we go on any further, it's time for the Friday song. I've missed this. We haven't done this in the past few weeks with you guys. So I've here totally we go, honey. Are you it. ready? I, oh, I am 100% ready. Are you guys right. ready? Michael's ready. joining us. Michael, are you ready? Let's do this. Here we go. Friday, Friday. Friday. Yes, it's Friday. Friday. And that's become officially the most annoying song on earth. <laughs> I love it. Oh my people, some people really hate that some song. Some people hate it, but I love it. Obviously, we don't have the most pleasant singing voices. No. Or maybe speaking voices for some people. Yeah, we get a lot of like rude comments about that song. That's but, probably hey. the number one thing that we get troll comments are um talking about the voices. Yes. Okay, mine in particular, but yeah. that's just how it is, guys. Oh well. They're gonna troll about something. You gotta troll about something. If it wasn't your voice, honey, it would be something else. Which I'm. Um, let's leave it at the voice. Yeah. Let's leave it there. Okay. Hi, I'm Bob. Cool that. Bob from from Ajax joining us. Will Plunk. Will, this is actually from you, I think. That's I think. actually from Scoggit. Oh, our is it? Barbecue brother <laughs> Scoggit, because. This is from actually a place that is only in Texas, which we have Uncle Steve in the house. Uncle Steve, this is like on our bucket list to go to. Is it pronounced Heb or is it H E B? Or is it Heeb? 
It's certainly not <laughs> Hebe, buddy. Okay, so this is a place, a grocery store that is known in um, to just be a Texas thing. Oh, I didn't know that. I got it wrong. Sorry. Dave, I'm going to say it's not Hebe. <laughs> okay, I don't think it's Hebe either. Dave GTS is saying, you girls are awesome. Love your live. Oh, thank you for the encouragement, Dave. Thank That's you so much, Dave. Where are you watching from, pal? We yeah. need to know. A lot S of Ontarians in the house. I did see that. That's freaking awesome. We, guys, that's where we're from right now. We're in yeah. Oshawa, Port Hope, on, or uh, we're in Port Hope, Ontario here. <laughs> S. Will is saying, voices that only a dad and a crush would love. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> That's like backhand compliment, S. Will. I'll take it, S. Will. You we know what? I'll, I'll take it because S. Will's back and I missed him. So I certainly to... missed him. He's, I... He can say what he wants. Okay, we've got some Ontario. We've got a Wasaga Beach and we got a Montreal. Ooh, so cool. Both hot destinations. Yes. Love I love it. You know what? I want to go to Montreal again sometime soon. I'm going to go to Wasaga again So do too. I. Yeah. But so guys, we're not going anywhere today. We're hanging out here at the grill studio coming at you guys with another Noble Premium Bison recipe. Oh yeah, this one's gonna be a goodie. It's kind of giving it away right here because you can see the spaghetti squash going on. Which Barbecue Pops before the show referred to this as a pumpkin. It's kind of in the pumpkin it ain't family. A pumpkin. I, yeah, but it, you, God love them. It's a, it, it, <laughs> it's a squash, okay? It's not. It ain't a pumpkin. Yeah. Okay. Sharky, saying where in Port Hope are you? I'm in Coburg. Wow, that's really that's that's very very close. Sharky is Sharky. You said said that. I think yeah. They probably can hear us all the way there. And when I say us, I mean me. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think we all mean you, honey. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. We got Eva Llama saying stopping over here to say hello. Eva Llama, you know I love when, when you come here on Insta. Eva Llama's over here too. I saw him over here too. We got Kevin Bledsoe Barbecue. Hello, happy Friday. Hello. We gotta start cooking here. Hello, okay. old friend. Okay, yes, exactly right. Okay, so we've got a spaghetti squash. We are making Noble Premium Bison Bolognese stuffed spaghetti squash rings oh, on the big baby. green egg. It's a winner, if I do say so myself. And all the vegetables, every single one of them, is from my garden. Key, I'm not so, joking, guys. Key has said that. I'm going to say approximately 82 times today, and it's only 12.07 p.m. Yeah. Okay? I've heard it many times. She's very proud. Okay, so Sharky's saying, mm, you didn't answer. Yeah, Sharky, we're not letting anybody know our current location because we've had some security issues with the grill studio, so we're not open to the public anymore, unfortunately. But it is Port Hope. That's but all it is. we can tell you. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> open your ears. You can probably hear whereabouts, okay? Now, we have Noble joining us. Our friends over at Noble are saying, time to try to trade in the turkey for bison. And I totally agree with that, guys. So anyone tuning in internationally, it is actually Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend. Yes, Okay, so is. instead of doing a turkey, I actually love that idea. This, is, this would be a perfect dinner to make for a Thanksgiving feast. Absolutely. And I think like a lot of people, I don't know if this is a fact or not. First of all, Will Plunk coming at us with a super chat from Kit Kat and Will himself. Plunk, oh! From Kitty Cat. Will Plunk, thank you very much. Thank you, Will Plunk. Thank um, you so much. But I was going to say, I don't know about you guys, but I'm noticing this year, it seems like a lot of people are like into more non-traditional Thanksgiving items. Cool. So people are like, okay, yeah, we've, we've done like the typical turkey dinner thing, but I'm way more open to like different sides or different mains. Or, or throw an additional thing in there. Yeah. Do the traditional things, but then also throw in something else. I don't, I can't get enough different dishes okay, for so Thanksgiving. Me too. All right, so I'm going to get started cutting our rings. What am I get, getting started doing? You're going to get started on chopping. So we have to start, I haven't made this recipe Great. in a while. So let's hope that I remember exactly the order in which to do this. <laughs> so we've got to stir our bolognese. So I'm going to get this Okay, pot. buddy, I will say this is your celery. It smells magnificent. It, it smells like parsley. It, parsley is in the celery family. I know, I'm aware of okay. that. <laughs> I'm aware of that. <laughs> and it smell. it does smell. Okay, guys, it is a food fight already in here, okay? Okay, so the top, please cut up the top too. I want to use the top. I know, Don't uh, think of getting rid of the no, top. No, I was going to say, people that are, that are getting rid rid of the top of their celery, you're missing out, okay? It's, it's such it's a very, strong very flavor. flavorful. Okay, so I'm gonna get our pot on grill preheating because <laughs> the first thing we have to do is brown the bison. And you don't wanna miss this step because brown bison is gonna provide this, this bolognese quite a bit of flavor. Agree. Okay? Now Steve is just sharing something with a little emoji that's saying more than I think he wants to say, okay? 
he just shared that his in-laws are coming up uh -oh. for Thanksgiving weekend. Okay, so I don't really know what that has to do with, but the emoji is saying it all, okay? Okay, I think I missed it, but I'm gathering from your tone what that emoji was. Yeah, <laughs> we got it, we got it. Steve, I feel for you, buddy. Yeah, okay, so we've got our, our pan on the grill, just preheating a little bit. C-Mac cooks in the house. C-Mac, what's up, buddy? He's in, coming in live from eight, from the ATL. Is that is that Atlanta? I don't know. An Oktoberfest. That's Very awesome, cool. C-Mac. No, it's Eggtoberfest. I said that. No, you said Oktoberfest. I said Eggtoberfest. I don't think you did. I did. Is there a rewind on a live? Because I don't think you did. <laughs> okay, don't shut that. Barbecue <laughs> Pops will figure that out, okay? One day there will be a playback situation, kind of like in like a football scenario. Okay, so the first the little tip I wanted to offer you guys, this this can be tricky to cut a spaghetti squash into rings because of the shape of the, the, the squash itself. Am I taking this down to a fine mince? Yes, you are. Because that's what I'm doing. Yes, okay. you are. Thank you. <laughs> See, that's the emoji Steve did. <laughs> Uh-oh. So I'm going to just slice off a tiny little bit on, this, on one side and then watch what that's going to do. That's going to make it so, uh, look, now we have a very flat surface that our squash isn't going to roll around on, and then I can go ahead and start cutting genius. Into, into rings. Absolutely genius. Now, where am I putting this? Off to the side. Okay, uh, so we have somebody board. named Lumber Duck's wife is saying, I always made sides that traditionally don't belong. Yorkshire pudding, fried rice, mm, hello. Ooh. Homemade pierogies, Parmesan coated acorn squash. Uh, oh. I want an invite. That sounds delectable, and I love that, like, that's, yeah, that's technically not traditional. But you're telling me you couldn't have a little fried rice on the side of a Thanksgiving feast? Oh, I definitely could. I think fried rice goes on the side of anything. <laughs> now, this is kind of gnarly. This one on the inside is, like, got a little bit of a gnarly bit. So we're going to see what's up once we get into this. <laughs> that's the thing with squash. Sometimes yeah. that looks like a winner on the outside. So you do really have to, I will warn you guys, if you're going to try this recipe, be extremely careful because the first time I um, did this, I was like, uh oh, you got it. First of all, you got to get the guns out to get through oh, it. Here we go. And second of all, you have to just really make sure you're not going to cut your hands here because you have to get a good grip on the squash to, to be able to cut into it. But get a really sharp knife and really make sure you're holding it because it can slip. It's kind of reminding me of like, speaking of um, the Thanksgiving type sides, a rutabaga. You gotta oh, really yeah. bring out the guns for that. And there's, I don't know about you guys, but I start giving it one of these. You get your knife in like halfway and you can't bring it through. So I give it one of these. Uh -oh. Banging it on the cutting board. That's not the way to do it, but it gets the job done. The, and now this we, is kind of like, like carving a pumpkin. It's the same thing. You know, you gotta get your, your hand in there and like. Yeah. We got Marisol in the house saying, it doesn't matter what is served or what day. It just matters being together. Yeah, Marisol. What a sweetheart, Marisol. Hi, you got Marisol. such a good point there. It's so true. It's just about being with family, spending time together. Marisol Agreed. is just the winner of our um, big box of bison contest. So I'm, can she just, she already tried our beer chili. So I'm very curious to see what she's, what she's going to make next. Okay, so wait, Farrah, Farrah's in the house and Farrah's saying she does that too. I think she's referring to the rutabaga. Farrah, thanks for being there with me, okay? I'm not the only one. Rutabaga is dangerous. And it's worth it though. I love it. I, that's, that's, a, that's a dish that not a lot of people like. But I love I'm obsessed a rutabaga. With it. Me too. I'm obsessed with it. Rutabaga is one of those like forgotten veg that people don't think of. Yeah. Like celeriac. You know how much yes. I love a celeriac. Oh God, guys, go, don't get her started on that. Okay, I get a, I'm going to go put in some oil into our pan. Um, we have olive oil here at the grill studio, but normally I prefer avocado oil for browning, but we're up here and it is what it is. And this is going to taste really good too. S. Will is sharing, I always make non-traditional side dishes. Got to give it your own flair on a traditional Thanksgiving dinner so they can, rem so they come remember it and keep on coming back for more, as I always say. S. Will, great point. And that's like any dinner party. Anytime you're having guests over, you got to put your own spin on it. Of course, absolutely. Okay, so for this recipe, we are using the Noble Premium Bison Steak Cubes. So these benefit from a low and slow type experience. So the longer you can cook them, the better. If you have the time, just put the, put the, your heat on very low. They, and they're perfect for things like this, like a bolognese. A low um, and slow, very simmer, simmer it down. Simmer it, baby. Simmer it right Maddie's down, Maddie's just baby. agreeing with everything I'm saying today, which I'm going to take full advantage of. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm going to I'm going to add them. Are you saying I don't normally, buddy? No, you don't. Uh, excuse me. The, I, you don't normally agree with me. It's like the other way around. I'm the angel between the two of us and everybody here knows it. Oh, we have our moments. We both have our moments, honey. I ain't gonna deny that. I ain't gonna deny that. Okay, so the bison's in. I'm gonna let that do its thing. I might even shut the lid, get some more heat in here. Our friend Natalie is saying, is that a melon? Because it does look like a melon. It actually really does look like a melon. And melon and squash, they're all very similar. Doesn't it? Okay, Scott is saying, must be a squash kind of day. Just sort of roasting some butternut squash for Ooh. a soup. Fall has arrived in southeastern USA. Oh, cool, Scott. Yeah, that is really going to be good. Um, it's southeastern. So where whereabouts, Scott? Is, it, is the weather... Uh, we always like to break it down by weather and time zone. I need to, if yes. it's the same time zone, I feel like it's probably like kind of like similar weather. Okay, so this last bit, this is where it gets a little dicey, guys, because you it's it's slippery. Things I'm are impressed getting... that you're actually making that happen, buddy. All right, I did make it happen. So this is kind of like the gnarly bit. I think I might give this to the chickens. It's, uh, or maybe this one. So we got all... Madwood in the house saying hello, hello, and he's saying Maddie and Kiki. We got Hansie's pet, he's saying, I'm cooking a spatchcock turkey, a boneless leg of lamb. Ooh, good combo. Ooh. And home cured ham, skin on, and a four bone rib roast a day before, then slice everything on my meat slicer. Oh. Okay, uh, what a delectable feast, James. Wow. That's, that's, a, that's a lot going on. That is a lucky guess at that Thanksgiving. Yeah, James, how many people are you having over? Like 105 here? Like, that's a lot of food. All right, so here's the goal, guys. You got yourself a spaghetti squash ring. Okay. Do you get it? I'm getting it now. Do you got it? I, <laughs> guys, do we all get it? Do, you do got, we all do got, you got it? it? Does everybody get that? Okay, so here's where the ring comes in. Spaghetti squash into a ring. You just take the guts out. We're just using this as like a bowl, kind of. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I didn't even know Fritz Frank was in here, but he's like, that's a lot of melon talk. Good thing HT and CJ aren't in here. I know, this isn't the same without HT and CJ. That's right, guys, they're both away. That's Hot Tommy and that's CJ from Cooking with CJ. They are both away on vacation, so they are not in the house. But Fritz Frank seems to be man in the ship here, and um, he's mentioning something without mentioning it. Fritz a lot Frank. of melon talk. <laughs> yep. Oh, Kathy! in the house. Hi, Kathy. She's hi, saying, Kathy. Hi, ladies. I was fussing with hubby's new phone. Okay, so she's, Kathy's here. She's a little bit late. That's, that's fine. She's trying to help Kim out. Hi, Kathy. How are you? <gasps> Ooh. Okay, which brings okay, me I to my next. I was expecting this. Yep. Good. Guys, Let's check talk it. about it. <laughs> All right, guys, you have three hours to talk about a carrot because he's going to take us there, okay? So you check can, that out. You're not even seeing the magnitude of how amazing that carrot is. I think is. they can see it. It's, it is wonderful. Stop making fun of me. I'm not. No, I'm being serious. I'm the one that cut into it and I thought, thought it looked awesome. Guys, does that not look cool? Okay, so this carrot is called Purple Haze. I was blown away by that TikTok. Check that out. It's called Purple Haze, and it's an heirloom variety, and it retains its color when it's cooked. Oh, so it does? Unlike some, um, like if you get some beans that are um, pur purple or anything like that, yeah. they will go green as you cook them, but not these. Fine mints, baby? Everything of fine mints, right. please. Okay, Farrah's saying, I do really like spaghetti Actually, squash. Ew. I have not done rings before. I will have to try this. Yeah, what made you go with the rings, buddy? That's a great idea. Okay, so g great question. What? The reason why <laughs> I went with rings is because. If the proper way to cook a spaghetti squash, I don't know where someone started this information about having to like slice it down the center like you would a butternut squash. That ain't the way, people, okay? The reason well, why you want to do it in this rings- This is sounding very infomercial. <laughs> is because this is where you're gonna get those long strands. Like spaghetti. Oh. If you don't do it into, like you'll see once it's cooked, you're gonna turn the fork and it like goes around and around. That's okay. how you get the, pr yeah, the proper- Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, spaghetti squash was never one of my faves just because of that. But I think now I do like that idea. You, the rings, yes. it's all about the rings. The rings. Yes, sweetie. Great Dane Barbecue, I did grow the carrots, Russell. I missed you, <laughs> we missed you at the, um, the barbecue competition the Yeah, weekend. Russell, what a letdown. It wasn't we the same without you. in there, guys. We attended a, a rib judging competition. I'm just gonna wash up. Honey. On um, Sunday. And I just assumed, which you can never assume anything, I just assumed that Russell and his family would be there, and he was not. But we still had a blast. Did we not, Key? We did, but I was really, really disappointed. I thought, so last year when we were there, I was able to spend a lot of time with Russell and his family. <laughs> 
And this the year, the kitties in particular. I thought that was going to happen again this year, but they weren't there, and so I was sad. It wasn't the same, that's for sure. No, it wasn't. Um, yeah, so Russell, I did grow the carrots, the basil, the celery, the onions, and the garlic. So I just, I don't know if I said this before, but every single veg that we're using in this, in this dish. Guys, easy with the garden talk, because we will go on and on and on. And I've heard a lot about it already before this live even kicked off, okay? I want to do a video on those carrots on its own. because yeah, you should. That's, they are, cool. they are quite gorgeous. All right, I'm going to go. All joking aside, they do need the limelight. Okay, I'm going to go and check the bison and see if we've got some browning action in here. Oh, yeah. Can you hear that? Yeah, that's already, you know that sizzle sound. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. Sounding great. S. Will is saying, love it when S. Kiki goes into her infomercials. <laughs> See, S. Will's back and he's already coming at Key. S. Will, remember the she's? That's, I think that's remember, what he means. Remember that winter? Oh, I got stuff on me again. Remember that winter when I was all about that she's, the, the plant-based cheese? We do remember. <laughs> Okay, so I have to get our squash on too because these do take a bit of time if you're going to put them in the grill. You don't want to rush a spaghetti squash or any squash for that matter. So okay, I'm going to actually wash up and put a glove on. Okay. Um, and I'm going to keep going. Please do. Yeah. Okay, so all we're going to do to prepare the spaghetti squash for the grill is we've got some grapeseed spray oil. It's a high heat oil spray. If you can't find this, you can also just use avocado or anything else that's high heat. And, but I love a spray oil because it's very even. So I just spray it on some salt and pepper over top of the rings. And that's all we need to prepare these for the grill. Because these are going to be like, we've all heard of like a bread bowl. These are going to be like the, the bowl almost, like the base of the bolognese. So they're, they're going to be the vessel that contains the bolognese in the center. Do you get it? <laughs> for the last time, we got it, all right? James Bearden is in the house. James, how are you, buddy? We missed you. We missed everybody. Yes. Hi, James. How are you? Nice to see you. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. Now, I did. I just cut myself a little <gasps> bit, but I just wanted to make sure. Uh, that's why I didn't know if I wanted to go in with a glove. Are you all right, buddy? Good. Yeah. I pulled the key and I, was I just say, who are you, me? Yeah, I never do. And that's what you get for making fun of key all the time for yeah, getting cut. Yeah, karma. But that's what I, know, I like to call it's it. It's a light, this barely counts as a cut. No. It's a light cut. Hey, twinsies. He has, uh, see? I, <laughs> that one's not my fault though. That was a food processor. I was in a rush and I took it off. Like I took the blade off too quickly. One morning I was trying to make a casserole. Like I hadn't even had coffee yet. Yeah, that'll do it. And I cut myself from the blade. So that, that was really really do it. That I never really cut count. myself. Who here is prone to cutting themselves in the kitchen? Are you more like Key or are, are, have, you, have you dodged it? Because I usually dodge it. I was due for a good cut. Kevin's laughing over here on, um, on TikTok. At the cut? Kevin, thank you, buddy. Okay, we don't laugh at people getting cuts unless it's Key. Fritz Frank is going out watch the fingies. <laughs> we, Fritz Frank, we gotta watch the fingies. We got, I don't even know what the heck happened there. Okay, I'm gonna get these on the grill. So we're gonna put these directly directly on the grill because um, we've scraped it down really well. It's nice and clean. And we wanna get some grill marks, some nice color directly onto the squash. Okay, and then I'll check on our bison when we're over here. We've got the big green egg fired up to about 500 degrees over here. And we're just gonna put the squash on and let them do their thing. Smelling delectable already. Just the, just the bison. Now, I will have you guys know, I am taking the time to cut um, a, he a clove of garlic for yeah. Kiki. You guys know that that ain't my thing. I like the garlic, but he's forcing me to do this. I will do this. And you see and I appreciate that is? it's just not, yeah, this is the, this is the garlic. Um, it's quite large, so is that why we're not going a full head key? We are, because that one, it is so large and it can really take over if you add too much. And I'm saying that because I've I've done it recently. Ooh, you that's don't need really a lot that's of it. really in there too. One clove of that garlic is almost like like three, I'd say, or four. Like the pungent one, like it's just more like strong. Mm -hmm. And it's larger. Okay. We have Colleen joining us. She's saying, I don't cut my hands, but I will accidentally drop a knife on my foot. <laughs> Colleen, she said, cut my toe open two months ago. Oh my goodness gracious, Colleen. Colleen. That's not, that does not sound fun at all. Imagine that, I can't even imagine that. In safe food handling, they um, will just t teach you to jump back. If yes, you, if which you, I have done that I do that too. Farrah's asking if there's any tips for growing garlic. Farrah, that's one of my favorite topics, if you noticed. 
<laughs> yeah, I Talking think she does. Talking about the garlic. It, it, is a, it is a good topic. I it love that. It is a very good because topic. Because and garlic is really tricky to grow if, um, if anybody has ever tried to grow it. One of my biggest tips is to make sure that you fertilize in the spring. Because as soon as the garlic starts to poke up in the spring, the ground is too cold for it to really get any nutrients from the soil. It has a harder time doing that. So you have to fertilize every two weeks. Otherwise, you're going to get really tiny garlic. Good tip. Solid yeah. tip. Kiki taking yeah. us to garlic school. Didn't okay. know if you guys thought you'd be heading there today. All right. And our friend Mary. Uh, I always think I am. <laughs> Maddie hasn't been around. She's been around me a long, a long time. <laughs> Uh, Marisol <laughs> is saying, I used the jar garlic yesterday for the beer and Heck bison yes, chili. yes, Marisol. See, there's a time and a place. Some people like to use it. When you're in a rush, you're telling me it ain't all right. It's not, I, it I don't buy it. It's disgusting. Well, I do, and Marisol does too. Marisol, thank you. Marisol, I forgive you. Okay, is this ready to rumble? It's ready to rumble. Okay, I'm going to go wash up. Okay. And then who wants to go for a little dip dive into the big bowl of questions? I am. I could. I could totally. I definitely could. I missed it. I missed you guys. We haven't seen you guys in a while. Um, we also, we haven't really talked about, we went on a trip, a family trip. Oh yeah, that's right. I can't remember when the last time we went live. That's why I forgot about that. I know it's been a few weeks. Um, our someone named Odin Page on TikTok is saying, do you two actually like each other? Yes, we do. Uh, <laughs> speak for yourself, buddy. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> joking! It's touch and go, depending on which day of the week it is. I'm just joking. Maddie and I are best friends. We're sisters, in case you didn't already know that. Um, but yes, we do like each other. I don't however, know why I would do that though, with that girl. However, though, a lot of people ask, like, do you guys, like, fight? Or, like, do you guys ever fight? And our answer to that is always, A, we are Italian, so that says a lot there, okay? And B, in order to be super close, and, and we work together every day, we own a business, you gotta fight it out sometimes. That's yeah. just part of it, that's normal. Yeah, 100%. Grandpa Barbecuer is laughing at that. <laughs> okay, honey, do you want me to add this and you do the questions? Because yes. this has gotta get rolling. All right, okay. you get going on that. Right, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go for here. a little dip dive. Let's go in there, all right, guys? Who is ready? to go in to the big bowl of questions. We put some new ones in because some people submitted some questions. So if you would like to submit some questions that we read out here on the show, um, let send us a direct message. We'd love to have them added to our big bowl of questions. Yeah, I'm curious because I didn't get to see who submitted what, so I'm curious to see what these are gonna be, that's for sure. All right, are you guys ready to rumble? Colleen's actually saying that's true and then Italian style with sisters, see? <laughs> yeah, she knows. Yeah, Italians don't mess knows. around. All right. Okay, so guys, the question that we have here is from Teddy R. Oh, is that Teddy Re Ted Reader? Could be. It could be Teddy Reader. I'm not. This is Teddy R. Okay, share your most embarrassing moment of all time. All right, very broad. Oh, very, I got a good broad. one. Okay, it's share yours, not mine. No, I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were looking at me, being like, "I will take you down." No. <laughs> No, I got such a good one. That could go in like a thousand directions. I gotta go wash up though, cause I got a little bit garlicky, but I do have a very, very good story. Do you? I don't know. Oh. It takes, a, I don't, it's, I don't get embarrassed like that easily, I don't think. Oh, but like, yes, you do. Everybody does. I'm trying to think of like something that actually, I would say is like my most embarrassing story. I don't know if I have one. It's not coming off the top here. Does anybody have one that they like to share? Because those are fun stories to hear. Kiki, I'd like to hear yours. You know mine. You know Obviously, all my stories. I'm, was I there? Probably. No. Yeah, well, I don't know if you were actually there, but Maddie and I are like an old married couple. We um, know all each other's stories. Exactly. You've heard this story like a million times. Okay, so I was in high school. Okay, and we're going deep back. This is a long time ago. That's just simmering away before we go before we can go any further. So this is a good time to tell you guys a story. All right, and thank you, Teddy R. Teddy with a Y R for said, submitting this. Um, this is a good one. This could go in a variety of directions. Yeah, so I was in high school and a teacher asked me to babysit her kid. <gasps> I do know this. This is a weird I don't really know. Now in retrospect, I'm like, I don't I guess like it's fine if you like trust a student and Whatever. We I was had grateful. babysat for teachers. Yeah, and I was grateful that she trusted me That wasn't me the only to, teacher. To babysit her kid. So I was in high school. I babysat this teacher's kid. He was very, very young. But he had, like, a lot of behavior issues. He, he was, like, just... I, I had not really had that much experience with kids. We don't have any younger siblings or anything like that. So babysitting him was, like, extremely eye-opening to me. Are he, you wanting to say that he was bratty? He was very bratty. <laughs> That's very bratty. 
And he did a lot of bad stuff that night. I remember he was like, he wouldn't go to bed. He wasn't listening to me. He was like, just running wild. And Classic stuff. babysitting. Yeah, it was nuts. But That's what happened. It was absolutely nuts. So then I remember the next Monday at school. Again, guys on TikTok, we can't go live with you, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to just decline. But okay, so on, we, on Monday at school, I was telling the story to my friends in like the computer lab or like the library or whatever. And I was going in great detail as to like what this kid was doing and how he was behaving. And they were like, oh, that's like terrible. That's so annoying, whatever. And I didn't really realize this, but behind me, the, it was the teacher, that kid I babysat was sitting at a computer with her back to me. And I had no clue. And I was just like ripping apart her kid for like an hour. And I could not recover, guys. I was like drenched in sweat. <laughs> how do you recover? And that How do you is, recover? That is thoroughly, <laughs> that is thoroughly a live and learn. Okay? It's like keep your mouth shut. First of all, you were being a little bit bratty too. Mm -hmm. What were you, a minor niner at that point? Like being a little, yeah, I was why 15. are you running your mouth? I was 15 or 14. I what, was super young. Yeah. Why are you running your mouth about like, t <laughs> like <laughs> traumatic? I know that is. And like, that's, I think many people have probably experienced that before. Where you're running your mouth about someone and then they happen to be in the room. That's the problem. Yeah. That did teach me a good life lesson. But let me tell you, that's a story that I will never forget. And that would probably go down in history as my most embarrassing story. I can't think of one more thing that's more embarrassing than and that. And you know it's bad when to this day you think oh. about it and you're like, oh my goodness Yeah. Gracious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it's okay. I'll guarantee she knew she had a breath. <laughs> Probably. And I think she did know. I think she did, but still. It's Kathy like, putting her sweet spin on it. I like it. Oh, the fact <laughs> that she was there, it was just so terrible. And I so am not like, I would never want someone to think that I think negatively about them or their family. Like it was just, I shouldn't have been doing it. I was in the wrong. Yeah, but that's why that's a live and learn. Total live and learn. And also that is a good way to learn it because sometimes yeah. like learning in the most traumatic way you will never forget that. Yeah, we've got Janimal the animal in the house. Hi, Jan. Janimal, how's it going? Okay, so I'm gonna now go ahead and add our, um, the bison has been browning for a while. The next ingredient we're gonna add is some tomato paste. So this is just a little flavor booster when you're making a sauce like this, uh, cause we are adding in crushed tomatoes as well. But I always like to do a combo of tomato paste and crushed. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's very concentrated. That's the barbecue pops way. It's, it's like such a, it's like, blended sun-dried tomatoes, it's such a concentrated yes. flavor. I don't know if that's what a lot of people do, but that's how barbecue pops taught us. That's not the barbecue mama way. And they're both Italian and they both fight this out for years to come <laughs> on who makes the better sauce, who makes sauce the right way. But so does anybody here use tomato paste? Because I would like to know. Barbecue mama's giving me the stink yeah. eye. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> She's like, oh, hell no. No, you don't use that. <laughs> I like that. I personally, that's like my, because especially like if recipes that I'm making for myself when you're making this paste, you gotta have all the flavor you can. <laughs> <laughs> that's why Key uses every recipe that Key makes usually has a load of fresh garlic and dried garlic. Yeah, you gotta amp you up really that flavor. You really gotta flavor it up. Okay, you so really, then we've really got- gotta flavor it up. Re dried oregano. Don't go too heavy because you can really wreck stuff. I'm saying that from, again, experience and a bay leaf. Okay, now in that time, I did think of something that was kind of embarrassing. I thought, I think I shared this before. Um, and Key, you were there and you were also the cause of this um, embarrassing story. Was I? Yep, you were. Yeah, I'm the youngest. Why am I not surprised? Exactly. So speaking of brats, Kiki, <laughs> Kiki was a little brat too, still is. Hey. <laughs> you guys know she is, okay? All right, so my story goes back to elementary school, so even past keys, and I was doing a line dance up on stage wearing, for some reason, we're talking 90s, I was wearing turquoise cords, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Tur <laughs> turquoise. Cords are back, baby. Yeah, cords, did cords ever leave? Oh, I got a pair of cords Who's this year. Who's still wearing cords? I don't think they ever went out. <laughs> I love cords. I love a good cord. <laughs> but for some reason, they were a bright turquoise color, and for another weird, confusing reason, the zipper in them was white. Yes, okay? I remember this story. Do you story. remember this? Now I'm getting it. Okay, so I was doing a line dance up on stage. It was like some school assembly. I was doing a line dance to um, Ain't Going Down Till the Sun Comes Up, Garth <laughs> Brooks, okay? 
A real banger. Which, good tune. Yeah, real good tune. That one holds up to this day. But I was doing a line dance to that, and from what it appeared to the audience, it looked like my fly was just wide open and some little white undies were showing. And I took great pleasure in letting Mad know that. <laughs> So it did appear that my fly was down during the entire performance, but it was not. It was a white zipper and key. As immediately I got off the stage and I felt so proud and excited. And she immediately took me down by saying, hey, 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 your fly was down. And no, it wasn't. Okay? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that is a pretty embarrassing story, but you do have a ton and they're, I'm normally the root of them. <laughs> a lot of them. A lot of them. I'm try I'm sure there's like some more recent ones I'm too. surprised you didn't share the Brendan Appleyard story. I already shared that one. Yeah, because that's like, like a week ago. Yeah, because that's... He was on the live. <laughs> that's probably the worst one and I can even admit that. All right, Rob's in the house. Rob's saying, I don't use I don't use tomato paste in my gravy. So Rob is letting us know he's the type of Italian that calls it gravy. Okay? I, I don't get that. Then what do you call gravy? That's not, yeah. Oh, good question. What do you call like a brown, like a turkey, a gravy that you would serve with turkey? Okay, barbecue mom is saying like brown gravy. Is that true? That would Brown be... gravy. Yeah, that probably sounds about right. Hmm. Very All right, interesting. Kathy's saying the only thing I can think of is back in high school, we went skiing <laughs> and my pants ripped. A guy that we were with let me wear his snow <laughs> pants. <laughs> That's pretty good. Why do embarrassing stories usually rip, like, in, like there's some nudity involved? There's I've some, ripped my some pants. Some aspect of like almost having some nudity. Yeah. I remember one time I was like, you know what kids are That's always terrifying, like. terrifying, Kathy. Dear goodness gracious. You know what kids are always like dancing around and being annoying and like stuff? I remember 100%. ripping my pants. I ripped my pants once. Remember when we were hanging out? At, I remember. I can see it. It was like me always hanging with you and your friends. And I was like my doing some sort of like friends. dance routine to like impress everybody. <laughs> and I remember I, I ripped right in the crotch. <gasps> the crotch? Yeah, and Bobby McLeod had to go ahead and tell everyone. Okay, we're going first and last names. Yeah, we're so going first and last names. Bobby McLeod, talk about a brat. <laughs> if you're in our past, guys, you're not safe. We will say first and last names, okay? Okay, let's, I'm going to check on our squash. Oh, and Kathy, say, see, to make it even worse, he was cute. Oh. Why do embarrassing things always happen in front of the person that you have a crush on or that you find cute? That does always happen. I don't know why, but that is always the case. I don't know. It's okay. A, okay, buddy. Check this out, guys. Phenomenal color on that. So this is what we're looking for, and we're already, it's, already starting, oop, it's already starting to get soft. And we're just going to go ahead and flip our rings here. Well, that one could maybe use a little bit more time. That looks phenomenal, and I love Oops. that those are, that's the, squash are a great, is a great vegetable for the grill. Yes. Okay, so you don't need to worry about it falling through the grill grates or that, like, you know how asparagus is, like, the number one thing that falls through the grill grates? Yes. Which, that is phenomenal on the grill, but a good squash like that, you don't have to worry about that, which I love. Yes, I do, too. Now, Rob, I don't know if I um, agree with these arbitrary rules that you're saying. What? <laughs> it's like, gravy is made with meat. A sauce usually is not. Okay, he's sharing his opinion, buddy. <laughs> Let the guy share his opinion, okay? He's like, Rob, <laughs> love ya. No. <laughs> All right, good to know, Rob. But Very that's, I like the logic there. Very interesting logic, and I think it's cool because I, for, I think Rob is in um, California, he said. Oh. And it's very cool to hear what people think in various parts of the world. Yes. Because it, it differs. Yeah. Okay, this is an ingredient, so we're going to add another couple ingredients to our sauce, to our gravy. So that's right then, because gravy has meat in it. Okay, let's go with it. Okay. Rob, from now on, it's gonna be called gravy today. Or as we call it, we also actually only call gravy groovy. Yeah, that's, that's our that's own That's always thing, what, we re what we refer to That's M&K language. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we're gonna add, this is was given to us by Will Plunk. It's that yes. better than bouillon. Oh my goodness, Will, we are fans for life of this stuff now. Yeah, so this is... And um, did he send us a, like a lifetime supply of that? <laughs> yes. Okay, so this is, if you don't have better than bouillon, it's just a cup of stock. Whatever stock you'd want to use in this. Okay. So I'm going to add that in, and I'm going to add in the rest of our crushed tomatoes. Now, Maddie let me know that this brand is more expensive. I did not know that. I just got it because I've heard good things about this brand. It is. And it is good. It's very good. So, guys, that is, um, for anybody that didn't see, he is using a can of, I'm assuming, Barbecue Mom, is it Muti? Muti? Um, I, have you guys tried it? Because I think that's new to Canada, and um, we saw it in the stores. It comes with a pretty price tag, but we're trying it out. 
I can show you, hold it up, honey, if you want to show people what it looks like. Yeah, and also I think the can looks nice. We, we do like to buy things based on the can appearance a lot of the time. And um, I think it looks cool. So have you guys tried this? Let us know how it is because it smells nice. It smells I've, really, really nice. I have tried it and I think it's delicious. I do think the quality is higher than um, standard crushed tomatoes in Have a you can. guys tried this? Let us know. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so our sauce is simmering away. We're ready. The squash is still cooking. Now we've got some time if you want to do another, another question. I would do a question. I would do also cheers to the weekend. It's, it's too early for cheers to the weekend. We're not cheersing to the weekend yet. I, it's well, not weekend. It's never too early on a Friday to cheers to the weekend. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. It's not time to cheers. Okay. I would like to do that. Okay. F wow. Okay. No, let's go for Let's do a question. Let's do a question. <laughs> we got Becca the Nana in the house. She's saying Muti is awesome. Great quality. All right. I thought so too, Becca. Becca, Me I feel you. like Becca would know. And I think that this might be like our, not our first time trying it. Marisol not our agrees. last time trying it. I've already tried it. You're not listening. I have tried it. Okay, big bowl of questions. Barbecue pops right, over rules. Let's everywhere. do this. And in, the, in amongst this too, while we're hanging out, while we're talking, we also can dive into Cheers to the Weekend because I'm excited. I'm very excited about this one. All right. Um, yeah, no, this it is a good brand. I have tried it before because I noticed it was new and I was like, hmm, this looks interesting. And I had heard that it was good. So I tried it already and used it in this recipe in particular while developing it. And it is very good. High okay, quality. Okay, yes, I do remember. High Obviously, quality. You have used it. All right. Okay. Ooh, this is a good one. Coming from James. I'm from Oshawa too. Okay, so guys, we are from Oshawa. Oh, so that's James, just a statement. That's not a question. James is from <laughs> Oshawa, I guess. We're not in Oshawa right now. We're about 45 minutes east of Oshawa, but we are Oshawa, born and raised. And I guess James is saying he's from there too. Okay, so the question from James is, what is the pettiest reason you would not date someone? Oh, this is a good one. Phenomenal. All right, now this is a really good one. I will repeat it. What is the pettiest reason you would not date someone? Okay, I, I would love to hear people's answers to this. Me too. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. Got one right off the top. Becca is saying, go Oshawa, great to represent. Becca, are you from Oshawa too? We got a lot of Oshawa people in the house. Yes, she is. All right, Becca, that's awesome. Oh, this far one is a little bit tricky. All right, now, Key, do you have any off the top? Because I have one right now coming out li loud and clear. Um, when I was younger, they used to call me the two-weeker because I used to break up with people immediately after two weeks of dating them. 100% so, true. Let and when me she tell says you. they, she means me, barbecue, mama, barbecue pops. Yeah, so well, let me tell you, friends. I used to break up with people for petty reasons. <laughs> We've heard them all yep. from Key. So like, what was hey, some of those reasons? Not now, not then, because then could have been like... When you're in high school, everyone oh breaks my up goodness. for petty reasons. Yes. Though. No one, what also reasons do kids break I'm up for? I'm more thinking like now, like I have one now that I wouldn't, like why I wouldn't like want to date somebody that... Give me it. I think it's kind of petty. What I is think it? it's kind of petty. What Becca's is it? laughing at the two-weeker. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's what we called her. All right. Okay. Hey, Fritz Frank is saying, I'm pretty petty. There's probably numerous reasons. Yeah, see, hey, guys, Lord. if we're being honest, we probably all have reasons. Okay, E with the X, Y, Z. First of all, hello. Hi, Cherie. Um, she's saying no picky eaters for me. I wouldn't even say that's petty. Phenomenal. That's like, Phenomenal. I could see, that's a good reason, yeah. I think. Especially if you're into food, that is, it would be very difficult. Because that's kind of like very difficult. It would be. Imagine like starting a relationship and knowing like long term, where could this go if I like live with this person and they don't want to eat anything good? Yes. That would be weird. If you're taking taking time to make something so delicious and then someone's like, I don't need onions. And you're like, you're not going to eat this because it has onions in it. I yeah. can see that would be a deal breaker. Yeah, no, I know. 100%. All right. We have new Fee King saying, hello, ladies. It must be a fall kind of day. I made applesauce and apple pie filling this morning already. Yes. This afternoon, I'm planning to make some salsa. Ooh, Ooh. Good, good combo. Yeah, that is going to be really good. Delectable. Now we have Brad joining us and his petty reason, which hey Brad. Brad, I love this, and I don't think it's petty at all. He's saying they don't enjoy barbecue. That's not petty. It's no, exactly. If you which don't like Brad? it, see ya. Which Brad? Brad, the one that was on the yeah. couch. Hi, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know which Brad you meant. That's not petty, Brad. That ain't petty. That's you that could be a good reason. You ain't in if you don't like barbecue. Yeah. Now, I, what What's I yours? was going to say yours? is mine, mine is currently, I'm not talking about high school reasons, okay? Because, yeah, he had a thousand. Oh, yeah. And they were terrible. <laughs> mine now, this is going to sound petty. I'm just being honest. 
I'm not into guys that don't know how to do stuff. Okay? Watch where Did you I go here, pal. pal. <laughs> I feel like that could really go I mean, stuff. I mean it. I With mean this it. crowd, thank God Hot Tommy and CJ aren't here. I'm meaning stuff as in like handy, handy stuff around the house. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm going to go stir stuff. I'm saying, I mean like guys that don't know how to like do like, <laughs> Brad is saying it's a slippery slope. I'm yeah. saying, I mean like guys that don't know how to like, fix like build things fix things or or if they maybe if they don't know how to do that if they don't have an interest to know how to do it yeah no i could see that do you know what i mean yeah like i don't know how to explain this now because you're being disgusting <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i could see that I could. like someone that's not afraid to like figure out how to do brakes on a car or figure yeah. out like an oil change or something like that i don't i i don't I'm not attracted if, if you're not interested in learning stuff like People that. People are laughing at handy, handy stuff. I told you. <laughs> I tried to give you fair warning. Oh, my. Okay. Brad's like, I, I didn't know how to phrase that, guys. <laughs> Obviously, I, I did not phrase that properly. But do you guys get what I mean? I'm getting it. Okay, yes. Like, so I, I personally, that's petty. I can admit it because I'm saying I also build stuff and I know how to do stuff. It's not about I need you to do that for me. I'm just saying. If you don't know how to do stuff, I'm personally, I don't find that attractive. Yeah, I could see it. Um, yes, we are sisters. Over on TikTok, someone is asking. Very good question. Yes, we are sisters. Um, I, could, I could see it, honey. Yeah, so mm. that's, that's my petty thing. What, is your, what, what would yours be in modern times? Not you know what's nine. weird? So I've been in a relationship for so long that I've never even entertained that thought. I can't even think of one because I've not thought of what I'm looking for in someone because I'm not on the market. Okay, but if you were, what would it be? <laughs> You're being lame. He's like, I'm happily in love. I'm not thinking about that. I'm saying think about it. If you don't like animals. See? That okay, would be a huge deal breaker for me. See, that could technically be seen as petty. If you weren't an animal person, you and I would not get along because I have so many animals and animals are such a huge part of my life. So not just like, you know, like the must love dogs thing, not even must love dogs. You'd have to like must love chickens, must love turkeys, <laughs> must love Lupe, of course. But like, I got cats, I got dogs. See, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Petty isn't, I don't think pe petty sounds like a negative vibe, but we all have like preferences. It's more like a preference. Yeah, exactly. Petty, but great question, James. Yes. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, James, fantastic question. Okay, so Kathy saying nothing specific. Okay, guys, uh -oh. Kathy's going there. She's saying nothing specific. I either like you or I don't. Oh, Kathy. So Kathy's saying vibes, vibes. Okay, so it's like a vibe thing. If like, if you don't, if you can tell based yes. on that. Did you know that people say, not that we have gone on dates in many, many years, but people say in a first date scenario, people can tell if you're going to like each other within like the first five minutes. Oh, I totally think and that. And that's not necessarily even getting to know. It's more like vibes. So I get what Kathy's saying. Yeah. Oh, I either like you or you don't. So. Farrah's agreeing with me. Thanks, girl. She's got my back. Okay. Are people not agreeing with mine? I don't think people got what I was trying to say. <laughs> I don't think because... You got to be careful with what you're trying to say, honey, all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. my goodness gracious. Yes. <laughs> all right. Now, do we want to go in to cheers to the weekend? I could I because our sauce is simmering away. Our squash is cooking up nice. Uh, I mentioned this once and I'll say it again. Squash is not something that you can rush. If you've made a squash, if you're interested in cooking squash, if you've tried to rush it, it's like an avocado. There's no two ways about it. You got to wait for it to be ready. Mm -hmm. And if you're wondering, what is squash going to be like paired with bison? It is pair, it pairs perfectly. It's so delectable. It's such a good combo. And like we already said earlier, it would be great to have that on a holiday table. It's, it's got that like sweet and savory vibe to it too. Cause squash, like spaghetti squash, um, is definitely not, um, among the sweetest of the squash, mm -hmm. it's but it more does savory. pair perfectly with the bison. And if mm -hmm. you guys ever wanted to know where can you get bison? Cause that's one of the number one questions that we get asked whenever we make a noble premium bison recipe, you can head to noblepremiumbison.com and head to their where to buy tab. Okay. So that actually is where you type in your address and your location, and then it'll tell you where you can get it. Yep. Places like Costco, places like Longo's, Sobeys, things like that. That's where you can find it. Or you can enter our next um, giveaway, which is probably coming up. Yeah. 
Marisol I'm, knows all about that. She won, and I'm not, I'm just gonna say that looked like more bison than normal. It did. It Noble's big... doing out some big boxes these days. Okay, Jan is talking about a milestone. Jan, I think that's still coming up. We haven't done milestones yet, so hang tight. Um, I just, was just rearranging our squash because, as you know, some areas of the grill are gonna get hotter than others depending on how the coals are. So one of them is getting a little bit cooked, and we're just gonna we're just rearrange them so the other ones can crunch up nicely. All right, we have Eva Llama saying he came for those dimples. Okay, <laughs> Eva Llama, you are a little cutie. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Now, guys, we are making a cocktail that you could possibly serve this weekend if you're having people over. Okay, this one is called, it sounds fancy, and I feel like it is fancy, okay? It's Everything called you make is fancy. an Olivet. Oh, oh. Okay, yeah. and it's French because it has the Saint Germain in it, which is right here. And it's basically a play on a regular traditional um, martini. Okay, okay, this is the wrong way. Yeah, there we go. Ooh. Okay, and so it's everything that you love about a traditional martini, but with the addition of this stuff right here, Saint Germain, if anyone's had it before, you know this stuff is phenomenal. We recently discovered this this summer and it smells delectable. I like the bottle. Oh my goodness. Remember, he described it as oh. tasting like lychee. It, to me, that's what it smells like. I haven't tasted it myself, but the smell is very lychee. -ish. It's supposed to be elder elderberry flower, um, or elder flower, I think. It smells good. Yes, elder flower, but it does smell like lychee, okay? So it's all your typical things in a martini, and we're talking gin martini, okay? I don't know why, barbecue, this is for barbecue mama. A martini, to me, needs to be having gin. What is None it? None of this what vodka is it? Oh. nonsense. I was going to say, what's the other, what's, what other could it have in? That wasn't proper grammar yeah, at all. It was not. What else could it have? But just straight up vodka, which oh. tastes like nothing. Gin okay. tastes wonderful, and then you're going to go in with some dry vermouth. Okay, so just like we're talking about the regular typical things in a martini. Evil except... Llama's not going to agree with that pour. He always wants you to add more alcohol. All right, well, Evil Llama, I will do it for you with this stuff, okay? This is the stuff. If you want to do a wholesome pour, you do it with gin, all right? We're going to go in, and this is bar for Barbecue Mama. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. What does gin taste like? It tastes like there's a lot of, like, floral notes to it. It's delicious. Okay, cool. Okay, and then since Eva Llama doesn't want us to do um, a, a controlled pour, we're just gonna go in there. He doesn't like flour. that. He wants it to just free, free falling. Oh my he wants it to just <laughs> <laughs> free falling. Okay, and then we're just gonna give it a little shake. Okay, that's all what we what is going on in there. Make sure that's on, and then just give it a little bit of a shake. Now, is this like the James Bond drink? I, I thought, isn't that what like James Bond has? It is a martini, and he does the shake in a not stirred. How do you know this? Yeah. That's one of the most popular lines in cinematic history. Okay, sorry. Okay, <laughs> that's that's what. Wow. Happens. Okay. <laughs> How do you not know that? I I I knew enough that I knew it was a drink, and that you knew it was James Bond. Yeah. Okay, but I will give you that. I you just didn't back. know the line. You came sorry. back. Okay. That's gonna be good. I can already tell. Handy's pit is saying. Gin tastes like a pine tree. Love it. Okay, that Does is it? a phenomenal way to put it, James. Yes. Oh my goodness Love gracious. The smell. Ooh. Okay, so I don't know if I was sold 100% on the name, all of it. Mm -hmm. um, what do you guys think? Well, you haven't put any olives in it yeah, yet. Yeah, so we're going to put, because <laughs> like a traditional martini, we're going to put in the typical garnish, which is the olive. But what makes it, why, why just call it Olivet? I don't really know. But maybe that's the reason why, because it's got an olive in it. Yeah, but that's what a traditional martini has in, has in it. Okay, and also I like to, I always do this, this is not traditional, but when I'm making a martini, I also just like to put in an extra little one or two ice cubes, okay? So that is definitely not traditional, but this is a very stiff, flavorful beverage, high in alcohol. And I just feel like A, the ice keeps it cold for longer, especially it's kind of warm here today. And it just dilutes it a little bit. I'm not, not, not a huge diluting situation, but just a little bit here. Hey, Fritz Frank is saying, are we still doing Gratefuls? We haven't done that in so long. For, that's because Fritz Frank is an original. He is an OG to the live show. He knows that we used to do Gratefuls. Fritz Frank, if you got one, throw it at us. Give I'd me love a Grateful. Yeah, I would love to hear that too.
That was something that we used to do a long time ago, and every week we would come with a grateful. If you have something that you're grateful for or thankful in honor of the Thanksgiving weekend, okay. Oh. You can't be doing an olive. You can't be doing anything olive without giving Key an olive. So I mm. always pack an extra one for her. We're gonna go in with two olives. Oh, now we're simmering away. Okay. Looks, can you smell the sauce, honey? I can smell it. Oh, this it gravy. Smells... Sorry, not sauce. <laughs> it's not a sauce. It's got meat in it. <laughs> it smells incredible. Okay, hey, uncles, Uncle Chico's in the house saying, Kiki holding that spoon like she means business. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Uncle Chico. She's used that spoon a time or two, and I'm going to say on me a time or two. Oh, yeah. Guys, look at the squash. Oh, my goodness gracious. We're, okay. These are coming along really nicely. A lot of magnificent smells happening over here. The bison, the squash, this cocktail. Honey, come at me and give me a little cheers for the weekend here. All right, hang on. Let me. I'm just rearranging. Because I got to give this a taste before we had uh, give this to Barbecue Mama. Because just you got to test it. You got to test if what you what you just did was right here. All right, okay? give me a little on uh, my big giant jug. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I'm on edge now. I'm afraid to say anything. All right. Give me. Okay, so I'm going to give this a taste and let you guys know if this is something that you should be serving this hall, this Thanksgiving weekend to your family members. Okay. I and mean, Fritz Frank is saying, I'm grateful Barbecue Pops hasn't brought up the score from the Dolphins-Bills game. <laughs> he's, he's just like this. So I don't know what that means, but... I'm going to assume the Bills won. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to assume the Bills won and Fritz Frank's um, Dolphins sounds Sorry. like they didn't. Sorry, Fritz Frank. <laughs> Okay, this tastes phenomenal. It looks good. If you like a traditional martini, you are going to love this. Okay, I love a traditional martini. It's a tr it's a cocktail that stands the test of time. I'm going to say this is even better. It looks great. It's more flavorful because of the St. Germain. It is really, really delicious. Barbecue Mama, are you ready for this? Because I wish I made like five of these. Okay, right. she's ready. Take she's it ready. to Barbecue Mama and hustle, please, because we've got five minutes, four minutes left now. And barbecue pops, we have milestones. I think we have milestones and pet paws. Do we both? Okay. We have both. Oh, so you're going to like that. <laughs> barbecue mama is trying it. You get a little glimpse of Lupe. My, my baby Lupe over there, too, just hanging out in the sun like a sweet oh, little angel. Barbecue mama did not waste any time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that not phenomenal? That is very phenomenal. All right, we're adding that to our list. Very similar to a gimlet. Yes, it. it is, but not at all tart. All right, Rob and Eva Lama are saying that they want a Halloween costume party. We're doing it, guys. 100%. We're, we've got a Halloween show planned coming guys, up. Guys, last year we were cookies and milk, okay? The yeah. Friday before Halloween, we definitely are. Okay, so before we run out of time here, um, let's see some pets or some milestones. All right, guys, we're going into pet paws. We are going into pet paws first. Let's check them out. Let's see what we got going on in here. Oh, we got Lou, we got Lupe, and we got Marbles in the sun. I know, isn't oh, Marbles so cute? They're all so adorable. Lou's my original man. And we've got Ninja, we've got <laughs> Chevy. Look at Chevy. Aww. And Smitty. Good oh. names, guys. I love it when it's an equal mix of cats and dogs. Too. Yes, yes. And we have actually have had um, a bird on the show. Yes. Um, courtesy of our friend Fr Fritz Frank and Marianne. Yeah, I miss that bird. Okay, so we haven't had a lizard yet. I'm no. kind of like wanting like a lizard. We haven't had a fish. I would love a fish. I would love like, let's get weird, guys. Let's get weird. A snake. Let's not encourage people to get weird. Let's check out which kind of milestones we have this week as well. I don't know what to say around here, okay? It's all not going to be We're good. not checking out a snake either. <laughs> Uh, Jan, <laughs> home for the season, Jan. Okay. And Jan, also <laughs> just and Jan also just said that he's celebrating seven years at his job. I believe he said so. Jan, that deserves well a done. round of applause. I'm sorry, a lot of people don't like their jobs out there. And Jan, you stayed in yours for seven years. Yep. I'm gonna assume you like it. That's that's fantastic. Well done, Jan. Congrats, Jan. Eva Lama saying we need better costumes this year. Eva Lama, are you saying better as in more? Skanky? Because that's not going to happen. <laughs> if I know Eva Lama, and I think I do, I think that's what he means. <laughs> Maddie and I are like the exact opposite of that on Halloween. Like, you know how a lot of girls will take Halloween as an opportunity to just like skank it out? We take the opportunity to like, let's bulk it out. Let's yeah. Be, let's be a box of milk <laughs> and a cookie. We haven't got our costumes yet this year, though. So we no, can't... it's up for grabs. We don't know yet. And I would we'll take some requests if anyone is interested in, in like suggesting what we, sh we should uh, be. 
Not I don't know though. about that. Now, Marisol said it's bad luck if you don't drink after you cheers. Did you not drink any of that huge jug? It's just water, though. It's still bad luck. Listen to Marisol. Okay, let's, Marisol, give, it another, I'm sorry. let's give it another cheers. I'm Barbecue sorry. Mama has taken that, and it's not going to last long over there. It is definitely not going to last long. Okay, Fritz Frank is saying I could have sent a pic of the praying mantis on our gazebo, but it's not really a pet. We were just oh talking. Oh, my goodness. I think it's like praying mantis season now, because we were just talking about praying, uh, praying mantis at... Um, Ended up on barbecue pops his shoulder while he was driving. <laughs> Fritz Frank, send it. I would love to see that. Yeah. They're terrifying, those things. Yeah. If you see those in real life, they're, like, massive, too. They are really massive. Okay, so our, we are close to done this dish. Very, very close. Our sauce is simmering away. Ideally, it would have a lot more time, but because of a live, we're going to speed it up. But the squash is almost ready. Um, so this is actually our first week for Maddie and Kiki After Dark. I cannot wait, guys. So what we're yeah. going to do now is we're ending the show here. We are at time. It is 1 o'clock. We are so happy that you guys joined us for the show. We missed you. For everybody who is a Patreon member, hop into the, um, the link that we sent you guys to the Patreon club, and we'll see you guys over there. Do a little tasting. Do a little, maybe some more questions from the big bowl. Yes. Can't wait to see you guys over there. That's taking place at 10 after 1. So yeah. take a bathroom break and come back, okay? <laughs> and otherwise, everyone else, have a fantastic weekend. If yes. If you are celebrating Thanksgiving, have a great one. And we will see you guys next week, same Happy time, same place. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Bye, barbecue family. Thank you.